Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with Boston Detective Spencer and his partner, Driscoll, traveling to the residence of Captain John Boylan. Upon entering, Spencer observes Boylan appears to be under the influence of alcohol. And it looks like his wife was hurt in an accident. Spencer gives a voiceover statement to a judge, in which he discusses his investigation into Boylan's suspected involvement in the murder of Gloria Wisniewski. In the testimony, he details his visit to Boylan's residence. The discussion reaches a fever pitch, as Spencer viciously attacks Boylan, while simultaneously arguing that his actions were justified. The five years that Spencer has been sentenced to serve in prison are almost up. While incarcerated, Spencer makes the acquaintance of Squeeb, a fellow convict, who has ties to an Aryan supremacist. Spencer is surrounded by Squeeb and the other members of the group, and they continue to give him a parting message. As a result of the ensuing brawl, Spencer gets into a physical battle with the other members of the group, but he is eventually able to fend them off, before he is eventually released from prison. Henry Samily, Spencer's close friend and business partner is there to meet him after he gets released. Spencer is taken aback when his ex-girlfriend Sissy Davis makes an unannounced visit to the prison to pick him up. Spencer and Henry use Henry's car to get away, and subsequently make it to Henry's new home, where his dog Pearl is still residing, and where he now shares a room with a man named Hawk. Spencer is dismayed to learn that instead of being pleased to see him, Pearl has developed a deeper bond to Hawk. Later in the day, Boylan is driving home and talking on the phone with his daughter, when he drives by a bus station, and continues on his way home. Suddenly, a truck drives over him, and a bunch of hooded individuals emerge from the shadows to viciously assault him, while his daughter listens in dread. The assault takes place while the girl is watching. Boylan is accused by those who attacked him of sharing information about their behavior with another person. After that, one of them uses a machete to cut him down to size. The next morning, when nurse Letitia gets home, she discovers that her husband, Detective Terence, has been shot to death in the head, while he was sitting in the driver's seat of his car. Letitia is filled with grief, and she is seen crying uncontrollably, as people walking by try to comfort her. Rapidly more people become aware of what has happened to Boylan. When Spencer becomes the primary suspect, Driscoll and another investigator pay him a visit at his home, to verify that he does not have an alibi for the crime. Thankfully, Spencer is able to demonstrate beyond a reasonable doubt that he was not there, when Boylan was murdered. In spite of the fact that Spencer has begun a new profession as a truck driver, the other members of the police department hold a deep-seated animosity for him, and are convinced that he was involved in the murder. Terence's probable involvement in the crime, as well as the media's portrayal of him as a guilty party, who took his own life out of sorrow, has caused Spencer a great deal of distress. Spencer is tremendously saddened by both of these developments. After seeing Letitia in an emotional state on television, he becomes motivated to find a solution to the mystery on his own. He pays Letitia a visit, since he personally knew Terence, and was aware of his integrity as a law enforcement officer. She divulges the information that the law enforcement personnel who examined the location, appeared to know exactly where a stockpile of drugs that were obviously hidden was located. She also asserts that the last time anyone saw Terence, he was accompanied by Boylan, walking into a pub. Spencer pays a visit to the cop bar, and has a conversation with another detective, who may or may not have known whether or not Terence was connected to Boylan in any way. Spencer apologizes for the way he treated Boylan, but shortly after, law enforcement officers who are loyal to Boylan enter, attack him, and kick him out of the bar. Unfazed, he goes to a neighboring convenience store, and purchases footage taken from a security camera, showing Terence and Boylan talking to each other outside the bar. At Spencer's house, Hawk assists in maintaining the steady stream of the footage. Spencer visits the location of the crime, in order to search for any evidence that may have been lost. After that, he goes to meet Driscoll in a gym, who denies being at the crime scene. However, Spencer is suspicious of him, because he found a toothpick at the scene, and it is well known that Driscoll always has one in his mouth. Later on, Spencer and Hawk share a meal together, but the protagonist's mood takes a turn for the worse, when he sees his former flame sissy at the restaurant. Sissy follows Spencer into the restroom, where the two of them have a fleeting intimate encounter. During their conversation, Sissy brings up an earlier pregnancy worry that she had, and she mentions that he had promised to help with it. On the other hand, they are of the same opinion that it is for the best that it did not take place. As they are leaving the restaurant, Spencer and Hawk spot the identical Corvette that had been captured on the surveillance camera. In his pursuit of the vehicle on foot, Spencer is mauled by a guard dog, as he cuts across the yard of a house. Despite this, Hawk is successful in locating the license plate number, and Spencer is able to obtain information from the DMV, exerting pressure on the clerk. 
they make the discovery that the vehicle's registration is in the name of a member of the Irish gang tracksuit. The name is Charlie Bentwood. While keeping an eye on what's going on in the outside world, Spencer Hawk and Henry watch Bentwood have a massage. Spencer reflects on his personal experience with Boylan and Gloria Wiesnevskim, when he was younger. In the past, Spencer would clear the snow from Gloria's mother's porch. In addition, Gloria fought gentrification in the Bentwood neighborhood as an activist herself. In the end, Bentwood was dispatched to intimidate her, but she showed no sign of giving in. After some time had passed, she discovered that her cat had been tied to the door. And after a few days had passed, Spencer discovered her lifeless body inside the trunk. It was up to him to tell Gloria's mother about the terrible accident that had occurred. After viewing the surveillance camera of the thugs murdering Gloria, Spencer discovered that Boylan had been sitting on the case, and became furious when Boylan evaded confrontation. This led to Spencer attacking Boylan at his home. Meanwhile, Hawk defaces the Corvette, in an attempt to enrage Bentwood. They continue to monitor Bentwood for several days, until two FBI agents warn Spencer to stop his investigation. Spencer pays a visit to Squeeb, while he is recovering in the hospital, in the hopes of gaining additional information that would assist, and convinces Squeeb to comply, showing him footage of Hawk on a date with Squeeb's girlfriend, which Henry is shooting. Squeeb first refuses to comply, but Spencer is able to win him over. Wonderland, the vital word is divulged by Squeeb at long last. Spencer and Hawk make the discovery, with the assistance of a journalist named Wayne Cosgrove, that Wonderland is actually a gambling scam, that is being run by corrupt police officers and a group of criminals. When Spencer visits the area to investigate, he is confronted by two members of the gang, and he is eventually forced to retreat from the situation. The funeral for Boylan is conducted with the highest level of military honors, as is customary for a law enforcement officer. The funeral for Terry, on the other hand, is held in a much more low-key manner, and only very close friends and family members are there. Elsewhere, Driscoll and his associate, Macklin, are discussing a sensitive topic, as there is a possibility of an undesirable situation arising, that could lead to exposure. Spencer visits a restaurant where he is recognized by the Trinitarios gang, who launch a brutal attack on him with machetes. He is able to defend himself and repel the assailants, until Hawk arrives in a car to assist him. Knowing that the Trinitarios are now aware of his identity, and may target him, Spencer chooses to conceal Pearl and Hawk with Sissy, for their own protection. Later, he pays a visit to Letitia's house, after it has been vandalized, and she gives him an audio tape that Terence had maintained between himself and Boylan. The tape proves Boylan was a corrupt cop, and that Bentwood Macklin and Driscoll were all implicated in his illicit operations. It also reveals that Driscoll was the one who made the fatal blow. Spencer, fueled by an unwavering commitment to justice, delivers the audio evidence to the FBI, hoping it would be enough to bring down the slippery Driscoll. Unfortunately, the feds find the evidence lacking, leaving Spencer no choice but to take matters into his own hands. With determination etched across his face, he tracks down the elusive Bentwood, a man with crucial information about a narcotics shipment, destined for the enigmatic Wonderland. The interrogation is nothing short of brutal, but Bentwood eventually cracks, revealing the shipment's impending arrival. Time is of the essence, and Spencer and his steadfast partner Hawk, waste no time in locating the truck. A high-speed chase ensues, leading to a heart-pounding showdown on the road. Two crooks meet their end, and a hidden stockpile is uncovered. As if on cue, Driscoll's menacing voice slices through the chaos, revealing his involvement, and chillingly kidnapping Henry, Spencer's dear friend. The countdown begins, forcing Spencer to make a daring rendezvous in Wonderland within the hour. United in purpose and resolve, Spencer and Hawk embark on a relentless mission to free Henry, fueled by a fire refusing to be extinguished. With the stakes higher than ever, they use a vehicle as their battering ram, smashing into the criminal syndicate's cars. The ensuing battle is a whirlwind of fists, bullets, and raw determination, leading to a climactic face-off between Spencer and Driscoll. It is a battle of wits and wills, and though Driscoll comes dangerously close to victory, Spencer's unyielding spirit prevails. In a moment of redemption, Spencer resists the temptation to employ the same cruel tactics Driscoll had used against Boylan, refusing to sink to his enemy's level. Driscoll is captured, but Spencer's integrity remains intact. With the law closing in on Driscoll and his corrupt associates, they abandon the crooked cops to their fate, leaving behind a damning trail of evidence. The long-sought exoneration of Terence finally comes to fruition, and he receives an officer's funeral, befitting a hero, and a scholarship for his son. In the aftermath of their hard-fought victory, Spencer Hawk Henry and Terence celebrate with a well-deserved dinner, basking in the warmth of their triumph. 
but Spencer's sharp eye catches a glimpse of a news report, a fire chief is arrested, despite his claims of innocence. It is a reminder that Spencer's quest for justice is far from over, leaving Henry and Sissy to suspect another challenging case lies ahead, beckoning him to continue his relentless pursuit of the truth. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.